The Yellow Wallpaper is a short story by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. When looking at this story through a new criticism lens, it becomes clear that it is not just a story about a woman who becomes insane, but rather one who was insane from the beginning. On the surface, this is a story written from the perspective of a woman writing in her journal. She suffers from nervous depression and her husband, who is a doctor, has moved them to a run-down summer home for three months. The woman is eventually driven insane by a yellow wallpaper that lines her room. Upon deeper inspection of this story, however, there are many hidden symbols and meanings to be found. One example of this becomes clear when the protagonist hallucinates other women trapped behind the bars of the wallpaper. The yellow wallpaper is a symbol for the oppression of women in that era. The women struggle to be free of the wallpaper, but they are strangled by the bars when they try to escape. This seems to represent the fact that women in the late 1800s were held back by sexist gender roles. Back then, there were obvious divisions between the masculine and feminine roles. Females could not lead. They were seen as too dull and emotional to be good for anything except maintaining the household. Their opinions on serious matters hardly mattered. The protagonist of this story eventually identifies with the women and actually thinks she's one of them as a result of her insanity. This makes sense because she was neglected the proper care from her husband and her wishes were disregarded as naive because of her gender. Another interesting detail is the fact that the protagonist of this story likely suffers from severe schizophrenia. Some symptoms of schizophrenia include being scatterbrained, paranoia, catatonic behavior, halluc hallucinations, and the perception of reality abnormally. The protagonist is shown to be scatterbrained in her writing style. She constantly jumps from topic to topic and does not seem to be able to focus on one thing for very long. She also seems very fixated on the yellow wallpaper and always lets her thoughts jump there. She is paranoid when she feels that other people are studying the wall and trying to figure it out. She freaks out because she feels that she has to be the first one to understand the wallpaper and she gets very defensive of it. She shows catatonic or unusual behavior when she begins to crawl around the outside of the room and even crawl over her husband for seemingly no reason. She has hallucinations of a woman sneaking around the grounds of the house. She also perceives reality abnormally when she believes that there is multiple women behind the wallpaper who are struggling to get out. The protagonist seems to check all of the boxes for a schizophrenic and that condition is the easiest way to explain all of her abnormal behavior. Casual readers of the yellow wallpaper will see the progressive descent of the protagonist into insanity. However, there is evidence scattered throughout this story that supports a darker reality. The protagonist was insane from the beginning. Firstly, her room's window has bars on it. What purpose would a barred window serve in a normal person's room? Insane asylums have traditionally used barred windows as a means of keeping patients from escaping or committing suicide. Another feature of her room that raises an eyebrow is her bed that is nailed to the ground. Insane asylums usually feature immovable beds, unlike a normal room. Also, her husband won't let her stay in a different room. He seems to feel strongly about her staying in the room that looks like an insane asylum almost as if he knows that she has to stay in that room for some reason. Throughout the story, the protagonist notices many odd things about the room. She notices that there are rips in the wallpaper where it seems that someone was clawing at it in an attempt to tear it down. She also notices that the feet of the bed have been chewed at. Most interestingly, she notices a smudge near the bottom of the wall that circles the entire room. She says that it looks like someone was crawling alongside of the wall, leaving that smudge. She excuses all the anomalies as a result of the room probably being used as a child's playroom before she moved in. In the climax of the story, however, the protagonist rips down the wallpaper herself. She also chews at the feet of the bed in an attempt to move it. However, the most damning piece of evidence is that when she finally loses her grip on reality completely, she begins to crawl around the room alongside the wall. Her shoulder aligns perfectly with the smudge. 
This all makes it seem like she's been there doing all of these things for a long time. It can't be a coincidence that all the abnormalities in the room happen to be things that the protagonist eventually does herself. It can be easily explained by her schizophrenia-induced reality-changing tendencies, however. The protagonist doesn't realize she is insane. She convinces herself everything is normal and that children did everything in the room. When analyzed, it becomes a stretch to believe that children were the culprit. However, it is obvious that it was, in fact, the protagonist who herself who made those marks. All this goes to show that the protagonist was probably insane the whole time and just did not realize it. In conclusion, this story is best analyzed using the method of new criticism, whereby many hidden layers of meaning are revealed. If a reader were to take everything in this story literally, they would miss out on some very interesting concepts. The idea that she has been insane the whole time brings a richness to the plight of the protagonist. This story has to be read more than once to truly be appreciated.